Hello friend, I am excited to pop in today and share a little tutorial for you to kind of help you elevate your blog and take it to the next level so that way it really becomes a more personalized experience for your user reading. This is specific to show it, this tutorial. So this is all about how to create a custom category page. You can also use the same exact concept to create a custom search page and your blog, but essentially what I want to show you is how to, you know, depending on what category, your different categories that you have on your blog, you can essentially, for every single category that you have, you can create custom pages for your blog. And let me show you how this works. So this is the home page of my blog. So if you go to meganmartin.net slash blog, this is where you would land. If you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see a canvas that is really where I'm highlighting the three major categories of my blog. I have more categories than this. If you were to scroll down, you would see there's four categories right here. But these are the three major categories. Um, there are some subcategories in there uh, within these three major ones. But these are like the three parent categories of my blog. I've got website tips, which is over here, make your website convert. I've got tips and tools for small business. So that's things like marketing, branding, and business advice. It all lives in that category. And then I've got show it website design tips. Since I sell show it templates, uh, it makes a lot of sense for me to have an entire category just geared towards show it. So if you were to click on one of these, say click on start learning for website tips, you come to what is a custom category page. This header specifically is only for this category. So ready, set, convert. It's got my category name, website tips, and then it's got a sentence that explains what you're going to find when you explore this category. It says press play on in-depth advice to help you tweak or create your website to convert. There's plenty of DIY website copywriting and design tips here to increase conversions, get a pin out. You scroll down and you're going to start to see some posts that have appeared which look different from the list of blog posts on my main blog homepage. So let's go back and look at that. If you scroll down on my main blog page, it looks different, right? You'll see that the blog uh, prompts are not a grid on the main page. They're actually more of that linear style to uh, kind of create a different aesthetic. But if I click on that category again, or any of my categories, the actual presentation of the blog posts have now changed. Uh, and that's really, in my mind, it, I like the, co the concept of switching from the linear to the grid because once you're in a specific category, uh, I like that now things are, you don't need that excerpt, in my opinion, now in order to kind of get a, a grip on what you're about to read. You know if you're in this category that uh, all of these blog posts are going to help you get uh, tips for your website, right? So if I were to click on say show it tips, that's going to bring me to another custom category page. And again, you can see the image header changed in the background. All of this text has changed. So this is like my little, uh, I don't know, my trademark phrase for show it, click, swap, drag and drop. That's what I use for my uh, entire really show it website design business. Um, so I incorporated that signature phrase here. Again, the category name is show it tips. And then I give you a uh, kind of an explanation of what you're about to do if you explore this category below of posts. So what I'm here to do today is show you how you can create this exact concept with your show it website. I promise it's easy peasy. It's just a few steps involved. Okay, first step is to I would I would suggest that you actually this is the back end of my show website I would suggest that you go ahead and design your main blog feed as you would like that to appear so you could see that this is what mine looks like it has that header image similar to these custom categories um, and on the main blog it says welcome to the blog and it kind of gives 
uh, a little bit of context of what you're going to expect when you're on this blog. On my main blog feed, I have some social proof. And again, those three main parent categories as you scroll down, I've got that uh, blog menu. And then on my blog is that linear style of posts. So I like to create my main blog first just for consistency sake. You'll see that this header of my main blog is very similar in style and design as my custom category headers are. And that's just to keep consistency in terms of the design and details. So that's why I like to go ahead and get that blog main feed designed. Then essentially what you're going to do is you're going to toggle over to your WordPress dashboard. Once you are logged into your Word WordPress dash dashboard, what you're going to do is you're going to go to posts and you're going to navigate to categories within that little pop up. You're going to see I have a few categories. Uh, I have quite a lot of categories. Um, so let's say we wanted to do a category for my parent category of business tips. Now I have things you can, you can essentially create this parent concept where if you have multiple categories that make sense under one larger category. So in my, in my experience, or in my example, branding, business and marketing, all of those types of blog posts really fit well under one parent category called business tips. So that's what I mean when I say parent category, you don't necessarily have to have parent categories. That's just something that works for me organizationally. You can use this concept for any kind of category, whether it's a parent one like mine with business tips or if it's just a traditional category straight out of the box. Um, what you want to look at, though, is what your category names are. That's what we need to be able to pull for show it. So on the show it side, you have your blog feed. What you can do is you can either create the uh, new category page from scratch. So you could just go to here, this plus sign and add a blank page. Or you could use that blog feed that you created, click these three blue dots and then duplicate the page. And then you can build, you can use the original blog template and kind of tweak and edit as you go to create your new category page. I've already created that category page. So what I like to do is title the, um, or what you need to do in order for this all to work Go ahead and title this page that you just duplicated. So if you duplicated your blog or you created a blank page, use this. Um, you're going to double click on the name and I would call it category space and then whatever your category is. So in my case, it's website space tips. So super easy. Um, and that matches up with this category right here, which is website tips. So name your page that, and then you'll see over here on the right hand side, when you do that, this uh, page section of your editor is going to pop up and you'll see the page name is category website tips. And what's really important is that right here under WordPress template, you'd click this drop down. It might be blog if you duplicated that. Um, or post list default if you duplicated that from your blog templates. Um, if you had a blank page, I'm not sure what it would be listed yet. I'd have to like go through that process. But what we want to do is click this drop down and we want to choose all the way at the bottom custom. So now show it knows that this page is a custom WordPress template. Now, what's really, really important is right here under the custom template name, what you need to label this is essentially this exact name that you just created for your page name, but with some dashes instead of spaces. So it should be category dash website dash tips or whatever your name is. So yours is going to be category dash whatever your category name is. So for if you have two words in your category like I do, it would be uh, it would be it's really going to actually pull from here this slug right here. So if I have multiple words, you're going to look at this slug right here where it says website dash conversion dot dash lab. So you would copy this slug right here, go into show it, hit, type the word category, type dash, and then you can just paste in 
that slug straight from WordPress. You can see here slug. This is what you want to copy to make sure that it actually is correct. If you were to add a category here and you just did the word business tips like say I have, it's going to automatically populate this slug. If you create a custom slug, so in this case down here where I had, uh, you know, conversion lab is one of my categories, but the actual slug is website dash conversion dash lab. That's what you want to make sure you copy is the actual slug that you are using for your category. So you can do that right here in this column. Then you can edit your page however you want. So then you're now that you've told Shopify or no, not Shopify. Now that you've told show it that this template you're working on is a custom WordPress template and it's for the category dash whatever that slug was for the category you created in WordPress. You can now design to your heart's content uh, with a unique header. You can have words that are different than other category templates. Uh, you could change the style of the way the posts are collected. So in my case, you saw that example that when they hit a category, it turns into a grid. You can do that. You can essentially change anything and everything you want on a custom category page opposite from the blog page itself, the main one, to, to, to look like however you want, whatever you think makes the most sense. And you can continue to do this process for every category that you have. So what I do after I've created my main blog page and I've got that the way I like it, then I create my first category page, get that the way I like it, and then I start duplicating from there. So once I've gotten my first category page designed the way that I like, I'll come back here, hit these three dots and duplicate it. And then I'll do the same process again where I come into WordPress. I'll find the category that I'm about to design for. I'll copy the slug. And then I will name the page category, whatever that na category name is, and then make sure that I use that WordPress template for custom. And then under custom template name, I will do category dash and then paste in that slug. And then I'll start again designing. At this point, if I've already designed my category page the way I like it from the first time I did it, then I can really just click and change the text, uh, change to whatever, you know, and then I'm just clicking and changing images. Um, it's, it becomes really, really easy to just click and swap and drag and drop just like, uh, you know, a little signature phrase. So, um, and then once you've like created those, you don't have to recreate the post styling at that point because you've already done that once as long as you're going to keep it consistent across the board. Um, that is already already done for you and will populate correctly. So that is how you create custom category pages. You can do the same concept with a search page. So if you were to look at my blog and search for, say, uh, you know, I don't know, let's just search shop. I have a blog post in here. You'll see that my header now is something different. It says you're on to something good. Search results. Um, and then these are those search results that populate when you search for a certain term. So you can do the same exact concept. You can duplicate the category page that you designed and then under template info or I would call the page search just for your own sake to know what you're looking at on the back end of show it. Claire's here. She wants to say hi. Uh, then under template info, you're going to use the word search. It's pretty easy or it should auto populate if you name it search over here. Um, the page slug is search just automatically and then your WordPress template instead of custom, if you're using it for a search page, you would select search in that drop down. When you're looking at this uh, drop down here, there's lots of options. This is where single post comes from, category. Uh, this is if you chose category, it would basically create one template for all the different types of categories that you have. Um, the custom one we just talked through is if you want to create custom category pages. So if you want different images or text or styling on category pages that are different throughout your website, um, you can play with lots of different uh page templates in here, but the main ones that I use are category, search, and those custom pages to kind of help me create a really unique experience and one that really just helps the person who is looking at my different categories 
make sure that they understand where they are and what they're about to explore. So I hope that was helpful for you to create your own custom categories on your show website. Claire and I are going to go play now and thanks for tuning in and thanks for being gracious about Claire in the background. So, okay. Can't wait to see what you create with your show website.